Good afternoon, Gail Borden families. It's Miss Jen from Kidspace at the main branch of the Gail Borden Library. And I'm here today this afternoon for um, Baking for Kids on Facebook Live. So last time I saw you guys, if you saw it, was this summer and we talked about a summer retreat that everybody loves, s'mores, right? We all love s'mores. But uh, it's fall. We might have noticed fall started just the other day. It's chilly out, very chilly compared to how it's been and it's a great time to make some kind of fall recipe so when i say fall what do you guys think you might think school you might think cooler weather you might think the leaves are falling you might think if i asked you about a fall fruit maybe you'd say pumpkins but maybe you'd say apples so we are going to do an apple recipe today because i feel like apples really represent fall maybe you go apple picking with your family there are tons of different cool varieties of apples at the store. They're healthy. So we are going to do an apple recipe. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and Natalie Lorena is saying, hi, Miss Jen. Hi, please excuse me. I'm doing this by myself if I take a minute to um, catch on to the comments. Okay, so let's go over the ingredients first. So we have graham crackers. So cinnamon graham cracker crumbs. You can buy graham cracker crumbs at the store. I usually don't. I just buy whole graham crackers. So I just, usually a sleeve, if you buy them, like one um, sleeve of these, is about a cup and a half. And I had trouble finding the cinnamon one, so I just bought the plain. If you have the cinnamon, even better. If you don't, um, I'm just gonna add cinnamon to my graham crackers. You also need six tablespoons of butter. So it said um, salted, again, I'm pretty flexible with baking with things like that, so unsalted, salted, it doesn't matter. That's gonna be about three quarters of a stick of butter. You need one block of cream cheese. Again, you, you can always tailor a recipe to whatever you like, so if you want the lower fat cream cheese, the regular cream cheese, that's totally up to you guys. Um, you need sugar. I brought this from home, so it's in a baggie, but we need sugar. We need what I love, heavy whipping cream, or whipping cream is another way to say it. We need vanilla extract. And we need a can of apple pie filling. This is super sweet. So if you've never run across apple pie filling before, it's basically you're ready to dump this filling, which is the apples that are soft like inside an apple pie, with the sugar like inside an apple pie, all cut up and ready to go. So that's all our ingredients. It's not even that many. The recipe is pretty simple. So since this is baking for kids, I also wanted to include a couple stories. So we're going to read one story really quick that is really relevant to what we're about to do, and then we'll get going on our recipe. So this is called Apples for Little Fox by Ekaterina Trukan. I'm going to try to stay out of the frame more so you guys can see the book. So I'm going to go off to the side so you guys can see. Fox loved to read. Mystery stories were his favorite books. He wanted to become a famous detective just like the ones he read about. Ooh, Miss Jen loves to read detective stories too. He also loved apples. Every morning he went to the library and on the way home, he stopped to gather apples that had fallen under the biggest apple tree. Oh my gosh, apples and the library, just like us. And he was so friendly to his friends. You can see in there saying, good morning, mouse. Fox read all day eating apples and imagining that one day he'd solve a mystery too. Every night, Fox wished that something mysterious would happen, but nothing ever did. Hmm. Nothing at all. All right, friends, I think this looks a little suspicious. We've got a bunch of different animals with masks on around the apple tree. I wonder what that's about. Let's find out. Early one morning, Fox set off for the library, just as he always did. <gasps> Good morning, Mouse. Oh, here's Mouse again, hanging out, greeting his friend Fox. But... When he cycled past the apple tree, just as he always did, he noticed something had changed. Oh, all the apples were gone. Oh, 
But you'd think he'd be sad. No, he says, oh, a mystery to solve at last. Oh, wow, he's super excited, friends. Let's see what happens. Fox started his investigation. He took photographs of the crime scene. Hello, Fox. Sorry, Bear, I'm too busy to talk right now. Then Fox looked for clues. Ooh, he's even got a magnifying glass. Love that. He used his detective magnifying glass. He'd been waiting a long time to use it. Hello, Fox. Sorry, Wolf, I'm too busy to talk right now. Fox even questioned a witness. Oh my gosh. The worm is saying, sorry, Fox, I was asleep. Owl says, hello, Fox. Sorry, Owl, I'm too busy to talk right now. Friends, he is really taking this job seriously of getting to the bottom of this mystery. Hmm, this is more difficult than I thought it would be. Maybe Rabbit can help, he is very clever. So Fox went to visit Rabbit. He had just started to explain the mystery when he smelled something. I would think foxes have a good sense of smell. Something very familiar, something very nice. Oh, look friends, what's on the chair there? Is that an apple? And there was his very favorite, a just-baked apple pie. Oh, happy birthday, Fox! I forgot it was my birthday, but now I know where all the apples went. In the middle of the party, Fox saw that the whole apple pie had disappeared. But he didn't need to investigate that mystery. Now, he knows exactly what happened, doesn't he, friends? They ate the whole pie. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on our recipe. So, the first thing we're gonna do is, if you have your graham cracker crumbs, great. If not, I'm gonna make mine really quick. So I'm gonna dump this whole bag of graham crackers, this whole sleeve, into a Ziploc bag. That way you have less mess and it's nice and contained. So I dumped my whole bag into the Ziploc. And I'm gonna seal it up, because we don't want crumbs flying everywhere. And then I'm gonna use, you could use a rolling pin. Um, I didn't bring mine today. I'm gonna crunch it a little first. Parents, this is a great job for your little ones, right? You can have them smush it. There's no danger of a mess. It's great for fine motor and gross motor. We're working those cram crackers. So I've started it, but I'm gonna use my, um, my can, I'll show you really quick, and roll it over it, just like a rolling pin, to create nice crumbs, because we want graham cracker crumbs, because this is gonna be the crust of our apple pie. So I totally encourage, I'm gonna move this back up so you guys can see me, baking or cooking with your kids. Oh my gosh, so fun. I have so many good memories of baking with my mom and my grandma. It teaches math, it teaches science. Kids will chat with you about whatever when they're helping you in the kitchen. And I found that even my kids who could be picky eaters at times would be more likely to eat what I made if they helped me make it. So it's just really fun. Plus, most of us, if not all of us, like to eat. So it's a good life skill, cooking as well, or baking. I just happen to really like dessert a lot, so I enjoy cooking. All right, this is almost ready. So the base of the apple um, no-bake cheesecake pie is going to be the graham cracker crumbs and the butter. So if you already have the crumbs, you can melt your butter. So this is about ready. So I need to melt my butter, so I have um, just a glass measuring cup. And I'm gonna cut the appropriate amount of butter into that. So I need, and it's really nice, butter usually has a thing on the side of tablespoons, how many? One whole stick is eight, and we only need six. So we're going to take most of it. And I also find if you're melting butter, it is um, really helpful if you cut it into smaller pieces. 
it'll just melt much nicer than in the microwave. So I'm going to cut these pieces into my glass measuring cup, and then I'm going to microwave this for just a few seconds to melt the butter. Oh, I should mention, I apologize, I only mentioned the food ingredients, but you also need a pan, right? Our graham cracker pie, apple pie is going to go somewhere. So a square pan, um, eight by eight is fine, nine by nine is fine. Again, it's pretty flexible. And then I have my measuring cup, measuring spoon, and I have a bowl for mixing um, the cream cheese, and I already pre-made the whipped cream, and I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to microwave the butter really quick, because then we're going to combine the butter and the graham cracker crumbs to make our crust. I usually do about... 20 seconds in the microwave, um, 20 to 30, depending if your butter's straight out of the fridge, then it might take a little bit longer. That's fine. Um, I actually use a lot of butter because I do bake and cook a lot. So I keep my extra butter in the freezer, believe it or not. And then if I need it, I just put it in the fridge until I need it. Um, so that's a tip you can do too. Okay, it needs a little bit longer. I'm gonna do 10 more seconds. Um, if you, a couple other things while we're waiting, if you have someone gluten-free in your family, you can try to find um, gluten-free graham cracker crumbs. They probably exist. I know there's a lot of great gluten-free products out there. That would be fine. If you're not a huge fan of how sweet um, the apple pie filling is, or you don't like overly, overly sweet, you can cut up some apples yourself. And then... Um, You'd have to warm them though on the stove with a little bit of butter and sugar probably to soften them. But you could decide how sweet to make them. Okay, I'm gonna move this camera back again a little bit just so you guys can see. So here's my pan. And just to make this super easy, you take the bag of crumbs, just dump it in, very simple. And then you're gonna pour your butter right into the pan. And then you're going to start stirring it because we have to mix it really well. So for now I'll just use my knife. You could use a spoon. But the bottom line is you want to really distribute that butter with the graham cracker crumbs. It'll taste nice and rich. And then um, it'll stay nicer once it gets cold because we're going to have to store this in the fridge, right? Because we're going to have cream cheese and whipped cream. So this is definitely a dessert that will have to stay in the fridge after it's all prepared. And then even in between servings, um, you'll want it in the fridge also. Okay, so I've mixed pretty well my butter and the crumbs. And then there's a lot of ways you can do this. Um, since my glass measuring thing is um, dirty already, I'm going to use just the bottom of it to tamp down, and I'll show you. And I'm going to make a nice, smooth, level crust that way. Because you want it even and smooth all the way around. You can use your hands, too, um, to fine-tune it. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we kind of want to get that evenly distributed so we've got a nice flat crust. So we've got a lovely graham cracker crust as the base for our um, no-bake apple cheesecake. Okay, so the crust is made. I'm going to set that aside for now. And essentially, there's two more components. There's Because the apple pie filling is ready to go, right? It's... I could tell you it's very sweet already. The apples are soft. That's good to go. So we're essentially making cream cheese uh, concoction and then a whipping cream concoction for like the cream cheesy layers in between the apple layers and the crust. So let's go ahead and prepare the cream cheese. So you need a bowl. 
I have my stainless steel, it doesn't matter what kind, except I would recommend something with decently high sides because um, you don't want it to splatter everywhere. And I left my cream cheese out for a little while so it would be soft because I'm sure you guys know when you've had it at the store before, um, it comes refrigerated, right, and it's pretty firm. So, and you will need your hand mixer or your stand mixer, either one, but this is the time to get that out if you're doing this along with me. So I'm gonna dump the, open the cream cheese and dump that into my bowl. Very easy. Okay, so the cream cheese is in there. And then the sugar is needed for two things. We need the sugar for the cream cheese layer, but we're also gonna use just a little bit to make the whipped cream slightly sweet. So go ahead and get the sugar. And you wanna pour a half a cup because cream cheese is not very sweet, my friends. So I'm just being careful and pouring my half cup of sugar. Okay, close enough. So that's all that's gonna be in this layer, the cream cheese and the sugar. So I'm dumping the sugar in. And then I apologize in advance. This is gonna be slightly loud. There was no way around this. So I'm gonna turn my hand mixer on for a couple, uh, maybe a minute to blend this together so it's a nice soft cream cheese consistency. So let me do that. I always start on low because I don't want it to fly everywhere. So let me show you. Here we go. And we really want to incorporate the sugar in with the cream cheese, right? To sweeten it. All right, it's pretty mixed, so I'm gonna turn it on high speed now because I'm not worried about it flinging everywhere. So there is the cream cheese layer. Pretty easy, right? It's just the two ingredients. It really does help if the cream cheese is softened. If you um, happen to forget to take it out, it's not a big deal. You can even microwave it a little bit. I've done that before. That's not a problem. Okay, so that was our next step. Now we're going to, at this point, this is when you would make whipped cream. Okay, so Miss Jen did do one cheat and I made my whipped cream ahead of time because this definitely takes a while with a hand mixer or a stand mixer to make. And I didn't want you guys to have to sit and listen to my hand mixer for a good five minutes. Um, so that does not make good for Facebook. So what I did was poured my heavy whipping cream. So this is, in case you're not familiar, the liquid version of what you buy at the store. Um, it's just the liquid version, like the pre-made version, and then you whip it and it creates air and it turns into whipped cream. Now with this one, it's the whipped cream because you it's plain whipped cream, it's whipping cream, but the stuff that you get like Ready Whip or something like that has um, sweetener in it. So we did add, I added a little bit of sugar, three tablespoons, and a tiny bit of vanilla extract. So it's just the whipping cream, the sugar, and the vanilla extract. And I whipped it for maybe three minutes. And the way you always know that it's done, first of all, look at this, it's not going anywhere. This was a complete liquid when I started, right? It's magic. So you put it in, you do that, and then you can always tell too, like if you, some people will use their stand mixer beater, if you use an utensil, and you do something like this and it doesn't move, you are good to go. So the whipping cream is ready. Cream cheese mixture is ready. 
So now we're going to fold, fold the two together. What does that mean? It means to gently turn over and over, usually one or two ingredients into another. Sometimes you have your wet ingredients, your softer, gooier ingredients, and then you have your dry ingredients. So in this one though, we've got this really fluffy whipped cream, and then we've got this cream cheese layer. So Oh, and I have a few people saying hi, and someone said this is a great literacy activity. Good point, Miss Paula, because you are reading the recipe. I love that. And there's a lot of great kids' cookbooks out there. Of course, there's Pinterest and the internet, and um, the library happens to have a lot of great cookbooks. I know that for a fact. So I'm gonna dump all this in out of my, so my cream cheese layer is going into the whipped cream bowl. And I'm using choosing to do it that way because um, I don't want to mess with the whipped cream more than I have to to keep its fluffiness, number one. And number two, this bowl, much larger than my other bowl. So it gives me more space to move. So I'm going to start gently. So as you can see, I go under, come over the top, fold, fold. This takes some patience. Um, the cream cheese layer is kind of a creamy, vanilla-y, off-white color and the whipped cream is more of a white. So that's one way, because you kind of want to try to mix it enough to incorporate it or mix them. Although you're not going to go wrong if you get a bite that is more cream cheesy or more whipped cream. It's really no wrong way to go here. So I'm going to fold this gently, a little bit longer. I can tell it's starting to mix together though. It's looking good. little bit more sometimes stuff will settle on the bottom and you really want to make sure you incorporate all that if you make brownies let's say or cake batter have you ever noticed like at the bottom of the bowl there's the dust I call it the dust like the um, the powdery batter right you want to keep turning it over so that you mix it all together okay I feel pretty good about how mixed this is I use my um, rubber spatula you could use a spoon to a wood spoon, or if you have a big metal spoon, that would be fine. Oh, one tip for um, making the whipped cream too is if you have a metal bowl, for sure, like a stainless steel, or maybe a glass bowl, but definitely metal, you can put the bowl in the freezer. I put my, my beaters, the things attached, in the freezer or the fridge usually. The colder all the parts are for making your whipped cream, the better. For sure, it'll turn out nicer and fluffier and is more likely to work. Okay, so that is ready. So to review, we've got the graham cracker sleeve, crushed to crumbs mixed with our butter. We have got the cream cheese mixed in with some sugar. And then that is separate. We had the heavy whipping cream or whipping cream mixed with um, a little bit of sugar and our vanilla, delicious. Okay, now the ingredient, the main ingredient, the one we've been talking about for fall, the apples. So let's, this one I'm lucky has a pop top on it, so I'm gonna open it. Okay, so if you are using the apple pie filling, like I said, it's um, really goopy, because there's like that sugary, almost jelly layer. And here's a really fun thing to do. And luckily the apples are so soft, you can use a butter knife. So I am going to, because these are fairly large pieces of apple, which I think would be difficult to eat. So I'm going to use a butter knife really quick and just kind of cut them. So you can just kind of run it through up and down the sides, kind of pushing the apples against the sides of the can, the knife, I'm sorry. Squeezing the apples essentially between the knife and the edges of your can, just to break them up a little bit. Grownups, if you're finding that difficult, you can also, of course, use a sharp knife too. Um, but if you want to let the kids do it and you feel uncomfortable with a little bit of patience and time, the butter knife will work to cut the apples. Because the smaller the pieces, it kind of spreads out nicer and um, it's more edible than, it's a little easier to chew, right? If we have small bite-sized pieces. Okay, this is almost ready. I just wanna make sure it's in a good spot. 
I can hear it. I can hear the apples kind of crunching a little bit as I cut them. Um, another question, or if you don't love apples for some reason, they sell different types of pie filling. So anything you think would sound complimentary to the cream cheese, you absolutely could do. Blueberry, cherry, I mean, I think blueberry cheesecake, no bake sounds really good. And they sell all those pie fillings together in the store. Okay, so that's ready. So before we assemble, I want to do one quick story. This one's quick, but it's so cute and hilarious. And then we will assemble and we'll be all set. So this one is called Hungry Bunny by Claudia Rueda. Hungry Bunny. Grr. Oh boy. Sorry. Here I come. Grr. Grr. Can you hear my tummy rumble? I am one hungry bunny. Grr. Oh my gosh, I thought it was a monster. It's just his stomach. It's time for a red, delicious, and oh, hard to reach. Look at, he's too short. Apple. Maybe you could help. Could you please shake the book so the apples fall down? All right, let's shake it. <gasps> Not the leaves. Uh-oh. Okay, friends, he says, can you blow them away? Everybody help me go. <gasps> Did it work? Let's see. Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. That's much better, thank you. Oh no, my scarf is blown away too. It's stuck in the book and I'm still hungry. Could you help me grab my scarf? Oh look at he can't reach friends, we gotta help. Will you place the red scarf here for me and hold it tight? I can use it to climb the tree and pick those apples. Look it, we've got a scarf, let's grab it. It's like the perfect little thing for him to climb. Just one more. Oh boy, he loves those apples, friends. Great teamwork, I got them all. Can you hang on to that scarf for me? We can do that, right? Whoops, I'm running late. What an uphill battle. Oh boy, guys. He's got this wagon full of apples and the big hill. Wait a minute. What? Why am I going uphill? We can fix that. Can you tilt the book for me? Can we tilt it? Let's do it. Oh my goodness. Oh. <gasps> Easy as pie. Now my wheels are turning. Why don't we have even more fun? Would you rock the book back and forth? Okay, rabbit, if you say so. We'll rock the book. Oh, zowie, keep going. Oh my gosh, look at those hills, you guys. And get ready to turn, turn, turn. Oh my goodness. He would probably like roller coasters, huh? Uh-oh, get ready to tumble. We've hit a little rock or something. Oops, I guess I upset the apple cart. Where are all the apples? Here they are. I'll just pick these up. He spilled all the apples, friends. He was getting a little too crazy. On the road again. <gasps> but what's this? Oh my gosh, friends. What are we gonna do? Hey, I think I'm going to need some help. Can you use my scarf to make a bridge? Ooh, give Miss Jen a second. Let's see if we can do it. 
Can I make a bridge for rabbits? <gasps> we did it! We made the bridge. Is he going to make it across? Let's see. Oh, <gasps> perfect. Thank you. I'm at the end of my rope. Haha, <laughs> very funny rabbit. Good thing I'm almost home. Ooh, he's ducking into his worn, his little den. Oh, I'm stuck. Would you please give me a little push? All right, let's push. Everybody help. Push. Woo, pop. Right on time for mom's apple pie. Oh boy, he had to bring those apples home for the pie. Not a bad apple in the bunch. Yum. We saved a piece for you. The end. All right, I thought that was so cute. I love Rabbit. He's super mischievous. Okay, but he knows how to have fun, and he loves apples like we do. Okay, so we've got all our layers. So once we're set, here's what we're going to do. We have the crust to start. We have the cream cheesy with cream filling, and we've got the apple. So I'm gonna take about half of the cream cheese filling, the whipped cream cream cheese, and put it on top of the crust. So let's do that. And this is just, you know, a rough estimate again. That's another reason I really like this recipe. It's very forgiving. It does not have to be exact. Sometimes with baking, I will say, you have to be very exact Otherwise, like cookies can turn out flat or things won't work. But with something like this, that's very easy and kind of rustic. Um, that's not as important, which is really nice, especially if you're going to bake with kids. All right, and I'm just trying to get it into the corners as well. Show you guys in one second. Okay, so there we go. It is all filled. Now we're going to dump the entire apple pie filling, which is nice because you don't have to worry about that. So I'm just gonna, I'm not, I'll show you in a minute, but basically you're just taking the whole can and dumping it on top of your cream cheese with cream layer. And as you're dumping it out, if you see you know pieces of apple that are still too big, you can cut them as you're going here. Of course, you want to try to spread it out throughout all the corners just to make it easier. That way everybody will get a piece of apple and cream cheese, whipped cream goodness in each bite. Okay, Ooh, a couple more apples. We don't want to skip any, right? We want all the delicious apples we can get. One more, there's a stubborn one stuck here. Okay, I did pretty good cutting. I only have like one or two apples that didn't cut into small pieces, so I'm going to do that right now. Okay. So, uh, we've got half of the whipped cream cream cheese on top of our graham cracker and whipped cream crust, and then the entire can of apple pie filling. Like I said, you could substitute um, other fruits, Maybe even, I don't know, pumpkin? I, I, it's not, well, it is fruit. It's a little bit different texture, but you could try it. I mean, that's another fun thing about baking is to experiment, right, and have fun with it. Okay, then you're gonna dump the rest of your whipped cream. So let me show you really quick. Here is my apples now, my apple layer. It's so thick, I mean, I'm not gonna hold it on its side for a long time, but it kind of stays. So now I'm gonna spread out, and I'll show you really quick. I like to kind of dollop it all around the pan, right? Just makes it easier when you go to spread it. 
Another nice thing about using um, this spatula is it's silicone, which sometimes I feel like makes it a little easier to release the ingredients, especially if you have something a little on the stickier side. Okay, so we've got that whole thing emptied. So now I'm just spreading it out. Again, trying to do it kind of evenly so that each bite will have the two layers of the whipped cream cream cheese plus the apple in the middle and the delicious graham cracker crust. I love graham cracker crust. I mean, I love pretty much all dessert, but I really like graham cracker crust, especially with um, pies or fruit pies. One thing I forgot to mention at the beginning, and I apologize for that, just from a um, perspective, so here it is really quick, and that's it. It's very heavy because there is a lot packed into this tiny pan, but we've got our graham cracker and butter layer, which is our crust. We've got our half of our cream cheese with the sugar combined with the whipped cream, right, with the little bit of sugar and the vanilla to make the real whipped cream and we fold those together. Maybe you didn't know that term, boys and girls, so now we know folding, right? And then um, we combine those, so it's crust layer, and then the uh, half of the cream cheese layer, all of the apples, and then the rest of the cream cheese. And that's it. What I forgot to mention when we were doing the graham crackers is um, I kept a little tiny bit in reserve and I didn't mention that. I don't have a lot, I should have kept more. That is strictly to make it look pretty or garnish or whatever. So if you have any graham crackers left, you can do that. If not, it's not a big deal at all. It's for looks or you can crush up like one more graham cracker and do a little bit of it. So I just added a little on top to make it look cute. And that is it. That is the no bake apple cheesecake. So that's it for pretty much for the Facebook live baking with kids today. We are open. All our branches are open. We would love to see you. I love when our friends from programs come in. I do some STEAM programs, Kids Explore, um, sometimes Family STEAM. So my colleagues and I at Kids Space would love to have you guys come in and see us and do some of our programs. We have a mix of virtual and in-person going right now. Or you can just come in and find books and chat with us. Or if you try my recipe, which I hope you all do if you didn't today, try it afterwards and let me know how it went. You can uh, let us know on Facebook. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was so much fun to talk about one of my favorite things, well, two of my favorite things, baking and books with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's fun. I hope you try it. I hope you're excited about the new fall weather. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a good evening. Bye.